first time since 1981, the regular season Rockwall Yellow Jackets can claim perfection 10-0 after a 63-33 victory over the Garland Owls on Friday night. Hello everybody, Chris Curtis here for the Rockwall Sports Center Yellow Jacket Update, joined by the captain of the perfect 10-0 Rockwall Yellow Jackets, Billy Quinn. And Billy, what a perfect way to end the season yeah. so far in the regular season for the Rockwall, Rockwall Yellow Jackets on Friday night. Let me... Let me make something clear. The team is undefeated. Broadcast team is also undefeated. There you go. Yeah, so we got two teams. Football teams put in a little bit more work than we have, but uh, seriously, that is unbelievable. To to go, in, I know at the beginning of the year people would talk a little bit. Maybe they can go undefeated, but I think all of us knew, or I had thought there was a good shot. At, you know, there's always a stumble here or there. This team has just been exceptional all the way through for ten straight games. They've had a couple bumps in the road. A couple uh, last few games have been close, but. Unbelievable. Since 1981, this is the first team to go undefeated. And so it, the sky's the limit, and who knows what happens here as we uh, start the playoff run. And you had hair back in 1981, I right? Did, it was did. It was luscious, too, wasn't it? it? Was oh, absolutely. Oh, girl under each arm. It was unbelievable. <laughs> oh, how things have changed. Not really, though. Not really. But let's no. <laughs> let's talk about the game on Friday night. 63-33. It was a uh, – Rockwell was trailing at halftime in this mm -hmm. ballgame. Mm -hmm. And then they pitched a 35-0 shutout in the uh, second half. What happened in the locker room uh, on Friday night? I, I don't know. I like it. I like what's going on. We always do a little thing on the broadcast about, uh, we talk about a fly on the wall. What, what do you think we're hearing in the locker rooms? And we knew that uh, the defense, you know, needed to make some stops in the second half so Rockwell could get back in it. They go down 14 to nothing in the first half. And that was the largest deficit they had all year. They were down 13 to nothing, or down by 13 points the previous week. So Coach Webb had mentioned, you know, you can't create adversity in practice he got some adversity they came back out and uh they, they closed the gap and then of course go in the second half i don't think anybody even though the strongest yellow jacket fan would have expected them to shut out garland in the second half and then score 35 of their own and blow this one away it was an exceptional effort and a great way to go into the playoffs we talked to coach webb and some of the players after the game here's what might have been said at halftime uh when the rockwell was trailing in the first half well, we just made some silly mistakes in the first half. Give credit to Garland. They did some things that we hadn't really seen all year. They had a really good plan for us, and uh, we made some adjustments at halftime. It was just a matter of sitting down and, 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 and our kids digesting what we're asking them to do. We made some adjustments, and, and uh, that was the biggest thing. Uh, we predicted it, but it was just more of a thing to get hype build up for the team. But um, it feels great. Uh, way to end senior year over here at Wilkerson with a 10-0 season. And Billy, after the game, what an amazing scene going on the field. Uh, Coach Webb getting the ice bath, one or two ice yeah, baths yeah. per se. Players hugging each other, everything just kind of coming together. This team has kind of built themselves on a family atmosphere, and that's clearly what happened to lead this team to 10-0. And just awesome celebration after the game on Friday night. I'd never seen it. I've lived in Rockwell for 22 years. We had never seen a scene like that at the end of a, a football game with the Yellow Jackets uh, going undefeated. You, you talked about it, dousing Coach Webb with the Gatorade or the water. Uh, they missed him the first time, got him the second time, got a few assistant coaches, and then, of course, the trophy presentation at the end with the uh, district championship. It's just something that uh, every Yellow Jacket fan just needs to embrace and enjoy. You don't get these every day, every year. It's been, like we said, but 23 years, 33 years, excuse me, since this has happened before. So uh, enjoy it. Uh, I have a son that's a freshman. He said the other day I may have, uh, may have picked, or he didn't really choose it, but He's getting ready to go through Rockwall High School, maybe at the best time you could possibly choose as far as athletic goes. And, and so they're very excited about it. It is a family. That football team, they stick together, they work together, and uh, it's really, really fun to watch. It's fun to, to, to uh, yeah, be a small part of it, to, uh, to talk to these kids, to, to talk to the coaches and, and the fans. Everybody is just really excited, and I know, I know there's going to be a lot of orange there at McLean Stadium starting the playoffs. Talk about the individual talent of this team. We, we talk about them, we talk about the Chris Warrens, the Xavier Castiles. We kind of talk about overall this season so far, what these leaders have meant to this team uh, and as we go forward into the playoffs. They've meant everything. We talked about it in a previous update where you have this class of 2015 with Castile and Galloway and Chris Warren, and then you throw in guys like Luke Terman and Will Reed and uh, Tobias and that, that are not seniors yet, but they will be, you know, some are not seniors, but they are huge leaders for this ball club. I, that's the reason they're here. That's the reason they're here. Uh, you have a running back that's gone over 2,000 yards in the regular season. That's something else that really is not getting a lot of talk. I think we take Chris for granted. You have a running back that goes 2,000 yards in 10 games. 
You have a wide receiver that's over 1,000 yards, Xavier Castile. Xavier went over 1,000 yards last year, but it took a couple playoff games to get there. He's over it now in 10 ball games. You have a quarterback that's a junior, Will Reed, that has come in and has done an exceptional job to, to get the ball where it's supposed to be, to make plays, to read the defenses properly. And then, of course, you even have situations where Matt Jones comes in for the last two games, two key games. They're huge games to get this district championship. And you have a sophomore quarterback, Matt Jones, come in and do an outstanding job. It's about leadership. It's about working together. And that's what these guys have done. And that's a huge reason, of course, along with the coaching staff and getting them ready for it, that they're where they're at right now. You want to talk about big games Saturday afternoon, a big one coming up. It's Rockwall versus Coppers Cove. Coppers Cove coming in at seven and three, but boy, they are not a seven and three team by any means. No, we talked about this before we went on the air. When I was growing up, I grew up in Lampasas right near Coppers Cove, and this was the worst team you could ever imagine as far as high school goes from the 70s and 80s and, and into the 90s. They were not good. It's still hard for me to believe, even though they've been doing it for a while now, that they are this good, but they are. They're an exceptional team. Of course, most people know about RG3 going there but they've kept bringing the talent through it it wasn't just him it's a lot of talent and their quarterback now Harris is a really really good quarterback they are seven and three two of their losses came when Harris was hurt so uh, we got to remember that they did have one loss against Midway the only team that maybe is slightly better than them in their district that beat them but that was a high scoring affair and they only lost by by a touchdown uh, you got Harris at quarterback he can throw the ball he is an unbelievable athlete he'll be playing on Saturdays next year he's a senior but they also have a solid running game uh, Canyon is their one uh, running back that's uh, going to be close to a thousand yards is about 900 yards right now they have another running back there a couple more that can come in and relieve relieve him they have a great receiving core and of course they will play some defense on you so this will be Rockwell's biggest challenge of the year I know we've played Horn I know Garland was a, was a huge challenge and of course we had Denton Ryan earlier this year this will be the biggest challenge for Rockwell it's at a neutral site that and and, uh, and it's at a a big stadium I think that helps Rockwell a little bit we're used to going to the big venues now, AT&T Stadium. They played at the Cotton Bowl last year in the playoffs. They played at Allen Stadium last year. So hopefully that gives Rockwall the slight advantage, but it is going to be a good one, and Coppers Cove is going to be a tough one to beat. Here's some reaction about Rockwall facing Coppers Cove on Saturday afternoon. We've already watched them a couple of times. They're a great team, uh, tremendous. They can score points with the best of them. Uh, you know, they, the, the three losses they had this year, all three to teams ranked in the state top ten. And two of those were with their quarterback out with injury. So uh, we've got our work cut out for us. We certainly didn't get any favors uh, drawing them in the first round, but we're up to the task. And Billy, in honor of this special season for the Rockwall Yellow Jackets, we're here at Rockwall Sports Center. If you don't know where it is, they've been a sponsor of this show all year long. They're right across the street from CC's Pizza. So come over here and pick up all your Rockwall Yellow Jacket gear. They have a special shirt, 10 and 0 shirt, as we display the graphic here for you. Uh, come by and get it. It's $8 for the T-shirt. $20 for the sweatshirt. Billy's already bought like six of them. Um, just make sure he looks good all week long. All triple and X, by the way. All triple yeah, X yeah. until Saturday's game. And uh, obviously a very special season for the Rockwell Yellow Jackets here. Very special season for them. And like I said before, we got to embrace it. I mean, uh, and everybody needs to be at McLean Stadium on Saturday afternoon. It's a Saturday. Nobody's doing anything. Let's get down there. It's a noon game. You're still going to have time to get back home. It's it, You cannot ask for a better situation. I know Coach Webb was very excited about it being a noon game because you don't have to wait for any other ball games to get done. It's the first game of the day. It's a brand new, gorgeous stadium. And uh, they're going to stay on schedule. And uh, I've got my playoff beard going. And so it's looking it, good. Yeah, I started this morning. So uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. But anyway, it's 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 a great time. And and I want to thank Rockwall Sports Center. They've been here. You said if you don't know where it's at, it's across from CC's. Everybody knows where Rockwall Sports Center is at. If you've uh, been around Rockwall or lived here for any length of time, and we want to thank Kim and uh, Kr and Jared for all they've done and all they've done over the years here. And so yeah, get here, get your t-shirts, and uh, let's go fill that uh, McLean Stadium with a bunch of orange. All right, you know the drill, www.rockwallisd. It's a noon kickoff for your Rockwall Yellow Jackets. They will look to advance for the second straight year in the playoffs. It's going to be a fun atmosphere. Of course, we got to get one final prediction from you mm -hmm. for the uh, game. You've been right so far. Not mm -hmm. so much with the scores, but the outcome. Well, yeah. Are you going to go 11-0? 10-0 with my predictions. We're getting ready to go 11-0 because Rockwall does win. Uh, not knowing Cove that well, we kind of know the teams, you know, we play during, you know, in the area here, but um, I'm going to say we're going to still put some points on the board. And I say we like I'm playing, but uh, I think uh, Rockwall 49, Cove 31. So no defense in this one. No. All offense. We haven't had defense hardly at all this year. I don't even know. 
you know, if they they even do they even practice defense anymore? Oh, you think thirty five nothing second half? There you go, excellent you go. point. I'm talking about other teams. Okay. I know we do. Okay, I know go. we do. But uh, anyway, no, I, I think it's going to be uh, that quarterback's really good for Copper's Cup. So I think it's going to be forty nine thirty one final Rockwall. All right, Coe's ready and Rockwall was ready. We will see you Saturday at noon at www.rockwallisd.com to listen to Billy and his crew. We'll see how we turn out. We'll see you next Monday here at the Rockwall Sports Center to break it all down. Thanks for joining everybody.